Hello and good day, everyone. Here we are for another discussion of My New Creation Life. We are glad that you joined us. And today um, we have a very interesting discussion. It's going to be on strongholds, what they are and how, how we get rid of them, right? Is that the way we're going to go? Um, I'm Camelia and this is Michelle with me right over there. And you might be saying, if this is your first time, what is my new creation life? Well, here's, here's the deal. It comes from, I'm looking here, 2 Corinthians 5.17. If anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away and all things have become new. So if you are born again and you're in Christ, you are a new creation. You might not feel any different right now, but you are something that you weren't before you were a new creation. Okay, all things have passed away. So we want to discuss what that means, what it looks like and how we walk it out. Uh, that's missing in a lot of uh, folks training and studying of the Bible. So we like to bring that to the forefront. And that's why we are here doing what we're doing. Yes, so, it, makes yeah. me, it makes me very sad that Christians, I see the things that Christians post, see the things that the discussions that I get into with Christians, um, people who love the Lord. I'm not, you know, disputing that they're born again or saved or whatever. They love the Lord, but they are not walking in the fullness or even trying to understand any of that. I'm not walking in the fullness because if I was, I'd look just like Jesus and everybody would know about me, right? But what I'm saying is, is that there is a path, you know, to do that. And that's, my my new creation that's what we're trying to get to and um and yes i'd like to talk a little bit about strongholds and something you said you said about pulling down and you know uh those strongholds and it's always a thinking of a stronghold as something bad which is the first part of it but, yeah. but we can create good strongholds right in our minds so that um that we know that we know that we know and that there are protections for us and it's you know so there's a however the old strongholds the bad strongholds were made is the same way that you can build up good strongholds so we're not going to be able to get through all of this in a half hour but what's a stronghold okay. just start there yeah, yeah. yes yes you have some scriptures for me too, right? Yes. So I want to start in 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. All right. So I'll read that in the King James. For though we walk in the flesh, meaning, you know, carnally in our bodies, we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through god to the pulling down of strongholds casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth exalteth itself against the knowledge of god and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of christ so a stronghold is something that was when I think of a stronghold, I think of a fortress or a castle, okay? Something with big, big, thick walls, right? That mm -hmm. is built up on a, in your mind, it would be a topic or a doctrine or uh, a teaching or a belief that isn't necessarily biblically true, but, but it's been there for so long that it's taken a hold and um it's like a fortress in your mind and that sometimes no matter what somebody else says even if they're reading the bible and absolutely refute that that stronghold is so um fortified it's such a strong tower um that you really have to chip away at it and to make it fall, right? Um, 
so an example. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So we're big on healing. We we know that healing is for today. We know that Jesus still heals. However, there are whole denominations out there yes. that do not believe that. And right. you can take them to Isaiah 53, 5, where it says that he you you are healed. Then you can take them to 1 Peter 2, 24, that says you were healed. And you can take them to Matthew that says that this is the evidence when he's talking about physical healing. This is the evidence of Isaiah, right? Physical healing. You can even tell one of these people who have a stronghold against physical healing that you yourself were physically healed. Okay? That's your testimony. You, nobody can take that away from you, and yet they still won't believe. Okay? Right. So right. that would be a stronghold in that person's mind against what the Bible says is the truth that Jesus still heals. Right? So, so that would be an example of a stronghold, a bad stronghold. Okay. 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 So really, they're going off their personal experience, maybe, and what they've been taught. That's, that's Even if right. Even it was taught in a church or by someone they know and respected, but that's, you know. Okay. Yeah, and um, something that I'm trying to get better at, um, at just as a as a Christian and a, a minister of the gospel, because we're all to be ministers of the gospel of reconciliation. We're all called to reconcile people back to God. We don't all have to be ministers behind a pulpit, you know, called to that, you know, office. But we're all ministers of reconciliation, right? Um, and what I've found when I talk to people and start to try to explain this, um, they reiterate what they've heard, but they themselves have never put their eyes on it. Or they themselves have never gone in and actually studied it for themselves. They just take what they hear. And what I've been trying to do is instead of trying to defend the gospel, I've been trying to get better at asking them questions, right? Okay, why do you think that way? What, what show me, you know, where you got that from, all right? And engage them in conversation because typically when you do that, the very surface level knowledge and they can't, they can only reiterate maybe what they've heard, and it was maybe not necessarily right, right, if we're talking about a bad stronghold, but they don't dig for themselves. And that's probably one of the biggest problems in the church today is that they don't dig for themselves. The gold that you mine is yours. The, the gold, gold that someone else mines is theirs, right? Oh, I like that. That's yeah. good. Yeah. So you've got to mine for your own gold nuggets in the scripture for them to actually be yours. And we say that all the time. Don't take our word yes. for this. Go and find it for yourself, right? So um, strongholds have a lot to do with understanding and knowledge, Okay, and they're really just thought patterns, um, good or bad. They're thought patterns, right? It's how you think about something because you were taught and because you took that as truth and then you, it, you've built it up and maybe you've experienced something that sort of aligns with it because your understanding was wrong, right? And so um, it just builds up, builds up, builds up and builds up. And so it is... Um, this, this scripture, Second Corinthians, tells you it, the the weapons of our warfare are to pull down those strongholds. Right? They're spiritual weapons. It's it's um, you grabbing on to the word of the Lord and going in and digging out that gold for yourself. And when you do that, the Holy Spirit helps you to understand. 
right? He gives you understanding. The more you do it, the more you understand. When I first started reading the Bible, I was like, huh? Like, what is he talking about? Like, I just don't understand this at all. And here and there, there would be a couple little scriptures that would grab me, like would, that would, I wouldn't remember them, like to say them verbatim, but the thought process or like the whole, you know, overview of what the scripture was saying would stay in my heart, right? And that's how he started working with me. And just like when you start an exercise program, yes. at first you hate it. <laughs> you it don't. Hurts. What's that? It hurts. It does. It's like you have to force yourself to go, right? You got to force yourself to go. Like when I'm done here, I'm going to force myself to go downstairs and get on the exercise bike, right? I don't want to, but I'm going to, all right? Um, it's the same thing with the word. You force yourself at first to read and you force yourself and you ask for understanding. And as you do that, you, you start to understand. And then that, mm -hmm. that starts chipping away at those strongholds and it starts highlighting the strongholds that you have because you'll read something and you'll be like, wait a minute, that's not how I, I thought about that you know and so that's how he works um but we, we've got to be open to that we've got to you know be listening for that you know a good exercise that i don't always do but i i think this is a good thing would be to you know before you read the bible you you know just say holy spirit you know th thank you for giving me the understanding understanding of what I'm going to be reading. Thank you for the knowledge of this. Thank you for helping me to apply this to my life, you know? And the other thing that would be really good is that you read very slow. You read yes. each word. Every word. Yep, because every word matters. The tenses, I think we talked about tenses a few weeks ago, right? The tenses of the word, you know, things that the, the actual words that were used, it's really, really important. And um, anyway, that, that'll be helpful in, in taking those strongholds. Um, I'd like to tie in Mark 4, 13 through 20 into this study. So we were on 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5, which we're going to go back to and study that a little bit more. But I want to tie in Mark 4. Mark 4 is the parable of the sower. And really, and I think we before, um, it sh to me, it should be the parable of the soil. Because it's talking about people's hearts. It's not really talking about the sower that's throwing the seed, right? It's talking about the receipt of the seed, which is the heart. And he says... This is Mark 4.13. He says, this is Jesus. He said unto them, know ye not this parable? How then will you know all parables? How will you know anything? How will you, uh, how do, how will you even understand anything else that I'm saying if you don't understand this, right? And so he explains all of the different soils of the heart. There's four different soils. And um, he talks about how the word that is given is immediately stolen by Satan or the birds. The birds are Satan, right? It's immediately yeah. stolen um, for a couple different reasons. Um, but that's a really good parable to study in conjunction with strongholds. Because you've got to, that soil of your heart has got to be open to the Holy Spirit's teaching and guiding you. And if you, you read something in the scripture, and we've been saying for weeks and weeks now, the first thing is this word has to be the final authority. Authority. Right. If it's going to be effective in your life, it's got to be his word, final authority, no matter what. Okay, whether that, 
that's experience, whether that's something someone's told you, whether that's a teaching that you heard, whatever, the word supersedes all of that, right? So if you read something and it goes against something that you have in your mind, a stronghold on something, you've got the soil of your heart has got to be open to saying, hmm, okay, I've decided that I'm going to judge God faithful, meaning I'm going to take what his word says, okay, and I'm going to act on that. That's faith, judging God's word faithful. Well, then if his word says this and I think something different, I'm wrong, not him. Yes. And so that, that's the that's where you start um, breaking and chipping away. This, the duality, though, here is that you don't just think it. Now you've got to take action on it. Okay. You, you can't just say, okay, yeah, that's right. I see that. Okay. That's not how I've thought about it before. Okay. I can think about that being right but then never change your actions, okay? That's not renewing your mind, right? You're right. mentally agreeing and mentally assenting to something, you know, but until you actually act on it, that is not renewing your mind. There has to be an action associated with it, just like faith. There has to be an action associated with it um there's something else i wanted to mention here so if we go to colossians 1:10, talking about, about actions and you know acting that out to do a renewing of your mind and breaking down strongholds Colossians 1.10 says that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. So if we break this scripture down, we've got to look at this and say, okay, this has to be God's will, right? Don't, don't be deceived, people, that we don't know God's will. We know God's will. It's his word, right? Right. His will is not mysterious. Correct. That's right. It's not. He's told you. So his will, if I read this right, that you might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing. Okay. So his will is that you walk worthy so that he's pleased. Being fruitful in every good work. So as you're walking you're doing something, you're being fruitful, you're seeing the fruit, you're producing, right? You're producing something from walking worthily of the Lord and increasing in the knowledge of God. So knowledge means not just knowing about him. You, you, and, you and I both know people who can quote scripture front and back, left and right. 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 have tons of scriptures that they've memorized and don't do a thing for his kingdom, right? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, knowledge is the experiential knowledge of God, meaning that you can know God's will just by reading the word of God and you then go out and you do it is knowing him, not knowing about him. And that will also help you kill those bad strongholds that you have. So, if, so the, our example was a stronghold of healing. Okay. God, God doesn't heal. God doesn't heal today. God doesn't heal. Oh, his word says he does. Okay. Now, what is my response? My response is, is all right, well, it says he does. So what as a Christian should I do? Oh, well, Mark says, you know, believers lay hands on the sick and they recover that's his command you don't have to be led to do something if he's already commanded you to so you don't have to be led by you know oh i'm waiting to see who he wants me to touch no if you see somebody sick <laughs> and 
they, they, they look like they need help. That's your leading. They look like they need help. His word says believers lay hands on the sick and they recover. Now you go do that. When you do that and they recover, now that's breaking that stronghold. Because how could you ever believe anymore that God does not heal today when you've seen it because you did. Right. And you have practiced it. Mm -hmm. Also, if I can add, um, in James it says, if any of you among you are sick, now he's talking to people in the church. If any among you are sick, call for the elders of the church and let them uh, lay hands on you, anoint you with oil, sorry, and have them pray the prayer of faith, which we won't explain what that is right now. And um, your sins will, you know, and then your sins will be forgiven and you'll recover. And people, they read that, they see that. That is a command from God in God's way of um, helping us, giving us healing. And the first thing we do is not call the elders of the church. That You see that all the time. I don't know many churches that even practice, you know, uh, uh, calling the elders or even having a time for healing during their service. But that's Other what he prescribed. Yeah. That's what he prescribed. Well, the church that I'm affiliated with does you know um, I don't know that they necessarily use oil unless the person asks for it because it's you don't need the oil it's just it, that was for so James was for baby right. Christians who maybe right. need a touch of something you know um, but it's not wrong no. to do obviously well, I mean, baby Christians uh, or, car or carnal Christians that, that need to have that that um affirmation of what's happening right that's they should be doing it they should be doing it that's right so you know um so there is in the new creation and i hope people who have been watching all of these are so starting to see a thread here of you've got some skin in the game you've got some things that you've got to do in order to grab on to the blessings that are already, have already, he's already died for all these blessings that you have. You get the um, great uh, inheritance of the blessings. But there, there is something that you have to do. Like we talked about before, if you were, you know, a relative died and left you money, you've got to put a demand on that. You write a check which is a demand note, right, for taking right. out. It's the same thing. You've got to understand what you have and then how he told you to access that. And anything that's against that, you've got to stand against. You can't just believe everything that you hear or have heard. If it is not serving you, if it's not serving God, if it's against the word of the Lord, it is wrong. It's wrong. I don't care who told you. Don't care. If it goes against the word of the Lord, it's wrong. It's wrong. And you cannot be effective in the kingdom unless this word is what you, you do and say. It's your lifestyle. You don't go against it. You know, people um, talk about the Antichrist, right? And they think of that as a person right and i right. guess it is at some point in time it's going to be but anything that goes against the word of the lord is antichrist and antichrist spirit has been in the world since jesus uh, went up into heaven yeah right paul says it's here now right right so think about that anytime that you say well god's given me this sickness because you're Antichrist. Oh, he will heal me, Antichrist. Okay. Um, he's teaching me something through this, Antichrist. <laughs> you know, all, all that's it's it's not right. You know, yeah, so yeah, that that's part of pulling down those strongholds is a big huge part is saying, okay, I am going to decide here and now that this word 
is the truth over my life and if i come up against something in the word that is totally contrary to what i've always believed now i'm going to do my due diligence and figure out how i can kick that, that stronghold out of my mind and bring my thoughts into captivity mm -hmm. okay to the word of the lord and that is something you do you don't say oh god please take this thought out of my head that's not how it works he gave us weapons he gave us the formula to um to do that ourselves and we need to do that correct absolutely correct yeah absolutely yeah and um it's not it's even not just what you believe it's what you've experienced you're going to read a lot of things that go against what we normally experience in this day and age and you're just going to not be be able to reconcile that but there are people that have experiences just like what's uh listed in the bible yeah they walk in divine health um they do miracles on a daily basis and if your life doesn't line up to that that's just something that you can attain to you can um study towards you can contact us and we'll, we'll get you more information and um, not to say that, not to say we've arrived at all to any of that but um, there are, we do know people that walk in um, greater, what's the word I want? Greater. Greater biblical fullness. Amen. Yeah. yeah, greater fullness. And that's what we can, and so, you know, and we're not comparing ourselves to them, though. You don't ever compare yourself to another human. We Correct. compare ourselves to Jesus. That's right. our standard, okay? Because but we can follow their faith. We follow, their, we faith, follow right? their faith. But, you know, if you compare yourself to another human, then you can go back and look at some horrible serial killer and say, well, I wasn't a serial killer, so I guess I'm okay. But if you compare yourself to Jesus, you're like, man, I am not living up to that. Thing. Right? Right. And that's what we're supposed to be doing is comparing ourselves to Jesus, not the serial killer down the street you know right right yeah yeah i didn't didn't mean to i guess it sounded like we were comparing ourselves or i was comparing ourselves to other folks but i like to see people that are walking where i attain to walk and not that oh well the apostle peter peter did all this stuff or paul and that was back then but no there are peters and pauls today doing doing wonderful things and you know what too camille it's a shame that we look back on like the the generals of faith. I don't know if anybody who listens to this will know what that is, but the generals of faith were people that really, really walked worthy of the Lord and were seeing all this stuff. You know, we look back on them and we say, wow, wow, that was so great. And isn't that a shame? Isn't that a shame? Because every Christian should be walking like them. They All they were were regular people who gave themselves up for to the lord and said i am sold out i'm sold out for this word i'm sold out for you jesus i believe everything and i am going to do this whether i look stupid whether i get arrested whether my family likes it or not i don't care i only care what you say and i'm going to do what you say and it costs them something it did. It does cost. Yeah. We're told to count the cost. Yes, Jesus paid the ultimate cost, but it count we have to count the cost to follow him. Absolutely. Yeah. And and one of one of my favorite sayings, which isn't really something he said, but um, you know, faith looks stupid until it starts the rain, says Noah. Mm -hmm. Probably for a hundred years he looked stupid. He got mm -hmm. laughed at. Yeah. But then it rained and he wasn't so crazy. Yeah. And for people who don't kind of know the backstory of that, it had never rained on the earth before that. It, it, the earth was watered by the underground streams. Right. That's what the Bible And yeah. he starts building this ark. And however big it was, I don't know off the top of my head, but it was huge. It took him 100 years. And so can you imagine for 100 years, 
people walking past him and saying, are you an idiot? <laughs> you know, what are you doing? Like, I, I don't even know what you're talking about. You're so dumb. What, you know, and then right. the rain, you know, and, you know, I see that in my life on a much smaller scale. <laughs> and I know, I know you do too. <laughs> yes. Yes. We've, yeah. we've been laughed at for sure. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Absolutely. But sometimes they come after they laugh and say, could you pray for me? Or can you explain this to me? Or, yeah. And it's all, but that's what we're here for. We don't take offense. Uh, that's another scripture. Um, you know, when you die to self, uh, um, doesn't matter what people say or do or whatever to you, because you're dead in Christ. Right. And it's Christ who lives in you. You were purchased you know, at a price, he paid that price for you. When you die to yourself and are now live in him, you don't get a say. Yeah. If you are offended, then you're not dead yet. That's all the right dead yet. Yeah. Or you've res resurrected and you got to put that down. So my question is, since we're almost at time or we are at time, um, so what do we have for homework for folks about their strongholds. What would you tell them to do from this? We'll talk next week more about strongholds. I know you have some more scriptures. Mm -hmm. So is there, is there a takeaway for them? So I, I would say that um, I would point them to either an epistle or a gospel. A, a, really any New Testament book, okay? Any, any one that maybe they like, one that they're going to read. <laughs> and I, yeah, point them to that and, and read it slowly and then see if there's something that is said that causes you angst, that causes you to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, what did that say? Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, or if you're that person who truly does not believe that healing is for you or that it is from God or whatever, read through Matthew and look at every single time that Jesus healed, every single time that he walked into a town and healed them all, okay? And go try to find something that says that he didn't. And if you think you find something that says that he didn't, I would ask that you bring it as a question to us so we can address it. Yeah. Okay. Yep. That would be it. Okay. Anything else before we take off? No. Nope. Okay. Nope. I hope whoever asked about this, thank you. Whoever was watching and said, I would like to know more about strongholds. That, that we, you know, we relish those questions and, you know, we want to help. So if you have questions, please, you know, post it here oh. for the fact um, so that we can discuss that so that you get a better understanding. So thank you, whoever that was who said, I'd really like to learn more about strongholds and how to get rid. And we'll do part two next time. Yes. Okay. All right. So in closing, we just um, bless everybody that's uh, listening to this. Thank you for showing up or listening after the fact. And we'll be back next week for my new creation life on Thursdays, 4 p.m. Eastern time. This is Camille and that over there is Michelle. And we um, thank you for watching. Be Thanks. blessed. Thanks. And, oh, the kingdom of God has come near. When two or three are together, there he is in our midst. So give us some comments, some feedback, and have a great week. See ya. See ya. Bye-bye.